Now, I'd like to say to the students of this university, we, your mothers and fathers, grandparents, we present you now with your adulthood, grown up to live the worst time in 18 years of what was fought for, died for, meant to be your generation's freedom from our country's shameful past. I don't need to remind you of the disaster of miners killed on strike in this, what has been your academic year. They were striking as a last resort to be paid a living wage, not alone for the risks of injury and death in their hard labor, but the lung diseases which come with conditions in the labyrinths underground. Commissions of inquiry, conferences dealing with what must be done about this catastrophic example of much in our country's condition that is hung over from our past and remains. And we have failed you. Failed in giving you a good start to a new life for our country. Of course, it's a platform cliche to say on occasions like this, that it is an honor to be invited to speak today to inaugurate this new lecture series. But for me, it goes further than that, to have the opportunity as well to see and hear for myself that initiative established against enormous odds by one man, Jonathan Janssen, or Janssen, he seems to have two pronunciations for his name, and being carried out with him by you, the students, the youth of the country. For me, that is a realization of the answer to what individuals are asking themselves. But what can I do? See what is being done here. The past is another country. They did things differently there. This university, yes, this university makes use of that past by the actuality of doing things in South Africa differently from what was done in that other, other country, which was our territory of the African continent from the 17th century to 1994. It's a maxim that a country's youth are a country's future. This means immense responsibility for you. Education is the means of preparation for that horizon. In 18 years of desegregation by race, color, what has been arrived at in education is that the upper middle class parents of black school children are able to enroll them in formerly white schools. And as far as black schools, no one would want to take advantage as open of those without toilets, electricity, supplies of textbooks, let alone libraries and science laboratories. Your integrated campus with 65% black, 35% white students reflects honestly the population proportion in our country. But to face facts, as in all South African universities, there is that of the standard of school education necessary for a student's understanding, comprehension of the wider vocabulary of the subjects they choose to study at a university. I'm one of the citizens who believe that universities must begin transformation to open higher education to our young people disadvantaged by inadequate schooling standards. The immediate action, of course, has been the ladder of recognized university entry standards. It sounds good, but academics, teaching at universities, tell me of the difficulties students on the lower entry rung, despite their intelligence, suffer in not having been educated open to the level of literacy and comprehension essential for the university courses. Now this university's bold, vital, second chance program for students. 
The results are an illuminating example of what has to be, can be done, to make ours a different country from the colonial and apartheid past. Your core curriculum is an initiative concept that applies far and wider to the present state of our country. The Constitution is our highest education in natural, national justice. A core curriculum is what we must have to be equal <clears throat> in practice to the Constitution in the civic institutions, the circumstances of our daily life, above all in public and personal mindset. The country's core curriculum must address something now let's put it in black and white in all senses of the labels. Put in black and white that evidences as an eternal xenophobia. What has meant for centuries to be black makes it understandable when there is an ancestral resentment as opposed to a job given to a white applicant standing beside a black applicant when they both believe to have broadly the same qualification. There's resentment when a black applicant is given a post, a job, when a white applicant with a privilege of experience and better education is the loser. And an aside, there's also gender, not race, variety of reaction. Out of centuries old enduring subjection of females in one degree or another, depending on the culture of a society, there is a resentment when the chosen applicant is a woman or vice versa, circumstance when it is a man among women. Black and white, we've been conditioned, brainwashed by legal and cultural, even religious, demeaning distinctions between race and colour. This university discarded and is tackling these, an image breaking of false consciousness. The child is teaching the man, the student is teaching the adult, the approach to the truth. We are humans under the skin and bones, nothing more, nothing less. We await your generation's entry to public life when you come out of the University of the Free State, equipped to bring to us, along with your professional degrees, the way to function in a population as the human beings you've learned how to be at this university.